If you asked your normal television programmed American about 9-11, many would still say what a sad day it was, the day the U.S. was attacked by Al-Qaeda's Muslim extremists. They're wrong about who did it, of course, but then again, they get their news from fake stream media and have been drinking fluoride, getting vaccinated, and spent their entire childhood in government indoctrination camps. Al-Qaeda, which was a CIA creation, has now morphed into ISIS, and the same people are backing ISIS that backed Al-Qaeda. The U.S. government, Israel, Saudi Arabia, the CIA, and NATO. Would your average American be shocked to know that the U.S. government, and now Donald Trump, not only created ISIS, but continue to fund and support it? Well, they should prepare to be shocked, because it's 100% true and fully provable. In fact, there have been numerous admissions coming from WikiLeaks, politicians, and even picture evidence pointing to the fact that the U.S. government is the largest supporter of global terrorism. Here's just one photo of John McCain with a few terrorist leaders, including ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Another example that comes to mind was when Hillary Clinton stated in a Fox interview several years ago, when the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan, we had this brilliant idea that we were going to come to Pakistan and create a force of Mujahideen and equip them with Stinger missiles and everything else to go after the Soviets inside Afghanistan, and we were successful. If you look back, the people we're fighting today, we were supporting in the fight against the Soviets. So there you have it, right from the horse's mouth. Yet if you try explaining this to Americans, most will call you a crazy conspiracy theorist. Even though Julian Assange released a collection of around 17,000 hacked emails about Libya alone, plus many more providing proof that Clinton pushed for weapons to be sent to jihadists within Syria, including ISIS. Of course, Donald Trump is well aware of this fact, which is the reason why, during his campaign, he came out and said, in fact, in many respects, you know they honor President Obama. ISIS is honoring President Obama. He is the founder of ISIS. And I would say the co-founder would be crooked Hillary Clinton. While many thought it was wonderful how Trump made that admission, he later in effect proved his allegiance to the same terrorist organizations by signing a $110 billion arms deal with Saudi Arabia, the same nation responsible in part for 9-11 and other atrocities. And it appears Trump is continuing to play his role as an ISIS slash terror supporter. It just came out that a US-led coalition shot down a Syrian warplane attempting to target a fleeing ISIS convoy. This shows that the Trump administration is aligning itself with the Syrian rebel forces, also known as ISIS, against Bashar al-Assad. In response to this, Russia first scolded the U.S. when their deputy foreign minister slammed the U.S. downing of the jet as an act of aggression and support for terrorists, and then announced that starting June 19th, it will halt all interactions with the U.S. under the framework on the Memorandum of Incident Prevention in Syrian Skies. Also yesterday, the Iranians launched missile strikes against ISIS bases in eastern Syria in retaliation to earlier ISIS-claimed attacks against Iran. It's no wonder that in the Western media, Iran, Syria, and Russia are the most demonized countries because they are the countries in which the U.S., CIA, and Israel wishes to perpetuate destabilization. As always, the elite's intention is to use their typical order-out-of-chaos strategy to eventually swoop into these nations for humanitarian purposes and install their own puppet dictator who will enact beneficial policies on their behalf. And while the U.S. funds Israel immensely, it is the Israelis who do much of the grunt work on the ground. Surprisingly, the Wall Street Journal even admits it. They said, Israel has been regularly supplying Syrian rebels near its border with cash as well as food, fuel, and medical supplies for years, a secret engagement in the enemy country's civil war aimed at carving out a buffer zone populated by friendly forces. According to interviews with about half a dozen Syrian fighters, the Israeli army is in regular communication with rebel groups, and its assistance includes undisclosed payments to commanders that help pay salaries of fighters and buy ammunition and weapons. So with the U.S. continuing to stoke tensions in Syria with the help of Israel and the Saudis, it is rapidly moving towards an all-out, multinational world war against Russia and Iran. We've already told subscribers of the Dollar Vigilante what we're expecting in the Middle East, and even by what date, later this year. And we'll release some of that info to the public soon. In the meantime, as this violence continues to escalate and threaten the lives of thousands of innocent people, it also poses a threat to your wallet. Much of this is being funded by the bankrupt U.S. government, who must continue to print money in order to keep paying the terrorists. 
This too is part of the globalist plan, which Donald Trump is sworn into under his training as a Jesuit and even recent admission of being a globalist. That was how we knew he had been selected as president, by the way, when he and Hillary showed up at a Jesuit function with Henry Kissinger after one of their final debates. We released that video, rigged election, Hillary and Trump caught partying like best friends forever with Kissinger at Jesuit Gala at that time. But to summarize, the globalists are bankrupting the U.S. while causing as much chaos as possible worldwide via ISIS and the U.S. military. If this continues, and we suspect it absolutely will, we will see major war as well as a hyperinflating dollar in the coming months and years. All of this fake stream media coverage of the James Comey debacle and politicians getting shot at baseball practice is all meant to distract you from the escalating and impending war in the Middle East and subsequent collapse of the EU and the US. The dollar vigilante began in 2010, and we knew and expected this to happen. As such, we recommend investments in precious metals, cryptocurrencies, and other hard assets. Those recommendations earned a 99% gain in 2016 from investments in gold mining stocks, and we've earned over 100,000% since we began recommending Bitcoin at $3 in 2011 and Ethereum at $2 in 2016. Bitcoin currently sits at $2,600 and Ethereum is near $400. We also recommend getting out of Europe and the US as they will be decimated in the coming years via war, default and hyperinflation. And it's all on purpose. Sign up to get all our information and advice at the Dollar Vigilante newsletter in the links down below. It's just a few dollars per month that could help you salvage your assets and also profit massively from being ahead of the game. Most people in Europe and the US will lose everything in the coming years. It's too bad. But if they're too stupid to see what is happening or too scared to do something about it, then there's nothing we can do. You can take action though, and we suggest you do. Things are going to get very crazy very soon. You've seen the dollar vigilante on mainstream media trolling the fake news and seen Jeff Berwick travel inside places like Venezuela and Cuba to expose the truth about what's happening in those socialist paradises. To get even more, make sure to subscribe to the Dollar Vigilante newsletter to receive two full 30-plus page issues from the Dollar Vigilante each month, plus market alerts on precious metals, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and gold mining stocks by going to dollarvigilante.com slash subscribe. The Dollar Vigilante newsletter earned subscribers a 99% return in 2016 and is on track for more great gains this year. Click on the link in the notes below or go to dollarvigilante.com slash subscribe to find out more. Welcome back. This is the latest update on the tensions in North Korea. On Thursday, two Chinese Su-30 flanker jets intercepted a United States Air Force WC-135 Constant Phoenix over the East China Sea. This is a large jet used for atmospheric sampling and has been sent by the US Air Force to the region to monitor a possible sixth nuclear test by North Korea. Apparently in a move that is designed to intimidate one of the Chinese jets executed a highly dangerous maneuver and flew upside down or inverted over the large American aircraft. A spokesman for the US Air Force said the unprofessional incident was being investigated and the issue would be addressed with China through diplomatic and military channels. A mistake by either the US or Chinese pilots could have resulted in a collision and the loss of both aircraft and crews. This highlights how the tensions in the North Korean peninsula have drawn in some major global players resulting in potentially dangerous incidents. In other news the US Navy has sent another aircraft carrier to the area. The USS Ronald Reagan has just completed maintenance and sea trials in Yokosuka, a Japanese port, and has now been dispatched to join the USS Carl Vinson on the Korean Peninsula. Both Nimitz-class carriers, with crews of over 4,500 and approximately 60 aircraft, the two carriers will be involved 
in a variety of training exercises widely believed to be a show of force following North Korea's recent successful ballistic missile test a week ago. This could also be seen as a veiled message to both Russia and China that the US is preparing to act if it becomes necessary. Although a sixth nuclear test by North Korea has not yet happened, there has still been activity seen at the test site where previous tests have taken place. And after the North Korean ambassador was quoted as saying a test will take place at a time and place of their president's choosing, it is likely where there will be a sixth test sooner or later. In fact, on Friday, North Korea's deputy to the UN said their nuclear program will continue to be strengthened to counter US aggression and it would never abandon its nuclear defence and preemptive strike capability. The US has called for even tighter sanctions from the UN, although this seems to have no effect on the North Korean dictatorship. At the same time, the Pentagon Defence Secretary, Jim Mattis, said there was a need for a peaceful resolution as a military conflict would be, quote, tragic on an unbelievable scale. Two other US defence officials confirmed this week that the ballistic missile test by North Korea was successful and showed a controlled, planned re-entry, showing a considerable advancement in their missile programme. For its part, North Korea stated that it now has a medium to long-range ballistic rocket capable of carrying a heavy nuclear warhead. This comes at the same time as a piece of propaganda footage emerged showing Kim Jong-un's proposed missile routes to four US targets. Possibly leaked on purpose, as a warning to President Donald Trump, it shows the targeted areas of Hawaii, San Diego, Barksdale Air Force Base and Washington DC after Kim promised to reduce the US to ashes and strike at the heart of America. The state of Hawaii has even become so concerned it has applied for fallout shelters in order to protect its citizens. With North Korea's latest missile test, it is obvious their goal of creating a long-range intercontinental ballistic missile is getting even closer. In his relatively short rule as North Korean's leader, Kim Jong-un has conducted an incredible 75 missile tests and the North Koreans are learning more with each one, whether successful or not. It has become such a concern that now the US Marines and the South Korean Army are undertaking training exercises to prepare them to attack North Korean nuclear facilities. What the coming days and weeks will bring, nobody knows. Let us just hope sanity prevails and nothing tips the balance towards an all-out conflict. Thanks for watching and check back for further updates as the situation develops. The world is watching. Hit that like button and be good to each other. This is Gruftikins signing off.